have the most contact or they observe the animal more often than anyone else. The villagers, known as the Baka, are eager to talk to the Westerners about the creature. They draw an image in the dirt of what they've seen. Look at that, Bill. Just to draw with such incredible accuracy the bulky body, the th between three and five claws, you have the head with the facial features of a python. The locals have virtually no contact with the outside world. And what's so amazing about this is these people have nothing whatsoever to gain from telling stories because we don't pay them. They get no reward from us for doing this. To help clarify their descriptions, Bill Gibbons has brought along a set of pictures. These will help determine if they are able to tell the difference between an elephant and a dinosaur. They live in the forest, so uh, uh, they, 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 can, they can easily see, find the difference between Mokerembembe and another type of animal. While Gibbons flips the pages, their guide translates. They don't know a bear or deer, but when Gibbons flips the pages to the drawing of a dinosaur, eyes open and fingers point. This is uh, Mokerembembe, which they are, so this is how the Mokerembembe look. This technique is known to some in the scientific community as comparative observations. Oh, like this. Every time you talk about Mokerembembe to Bakas or to people who live around the river, they, they only describe it as animal with a long neck and a head like a snake. This convinces Gibbons that the sightings are not a case of misidentification. But we've come to the conclusion that this is definitely a different, unique animal in its own right. Okay. This woman says she saw the animal while fishing with her husband. The head was like a kind of snake, but it was very long, very long. Also recorded the impressive zoologically accurate drawings made by several Michele and Bembe eyewitnesses that were clearly representative of a sauropod dinosaur, complete with the bulky body, long neck and tail, and series of dermal spikes running the length of the neck, back and tail. Additional information revealed that the animals also possessed an air sac similar to a bullfrog, which enabled it to make loud, bellowing vocalizations. <laughs>